morning I wake up and see the splendor of Allah's beauty, the sky at dawn, the silent trees. Praise be to Him, supreme is He. Praise be to Him, supreme is He. As I set to start my day, I think of Allah and I pray His blessings are with me. Bismillah, alhamdulillahi rabbil alameen, wa salatu wa salam ala rasul al-kareem, wa ala alihi wa sahbihi, wa man tabi'a sunnatuhu ila yumiddin. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. And welcome to this, the first episode in this new show, Think About It, where we aim to make you, as the title says, think about it. Think about why. Using your logic, your rationale, given the God-given instinct that we all have to think about our purpose in life, to think about why are we here, to think about why are we living this life and are we living it in the, in the right way. And today's episode, I want to really start off with, I mentioned logic and rationale, and that's something that we're always told, we're always taught. People always say, that doesn't make sense, or this must make sense, or this is logical, or this is illogical, or this is rationale, this isn't rationale. But we find that in the most important of things, which is our purpose in life, or who we worship, or the way we live our lives, a lot of the time we don't follow what makes sense, we don't follow what is rational, we don't follow what is logical. And in this series of episodes, we learn to, we will actually attempt, and we will inshallah, look into every different aspect or some of the main aspects should I say of Islam and look at the well think about it literally as the show says we'll think about it and analyze it and realize inshallah if Allah's willing that the, re, the the proofs and the logic and the rationale behind Islam and so many parts of the Islamic religion now Islam Let's go back to the rationale and the logic. And I'd like to quote here from a particular book written by who we all, many of us will know, Abdurrahim Green. And this book is called The Man in the Red Underpants. Very strange title, very catching title. And part of this book, and I'm paraphrasing here, he mentions, imagine if somebody came to read your gas meter or your electricity meter. And this man is wearing, he knocks on your door, and he's wearing nothing but a pair of red underpants. What would you do? And he says, you open the door and said, hello, yeah, I'm here to read your gas meter, or I'm here to read your electricity meter. What would you do? Would you just blindly believe him and say, well, he says that he's the gas man, or he says that he's from the electricity company, even though he's wearing nothing but red underpants, so he must be, I'll just believe him and let him in my house. Of course not. What would you do in this scenario? You'd give in your God-given intellect, you'd look at the situation, you'd judge this, the scenario, you'd say, you'd ask him certain questions, and then based upon the way he acts, the way he's dressed, the way he answers you, the identification he gives you, you would finally decide whether or not this man is actually who he says he is, and if he really is here to do what he says he's here to do. So likewise, this should be the foundation for anything. When we see something, we say to ourselves, you know, hang on a second, I won't just believe this because this person says so, or my society says so, or my friends say so, or my family members say so. Rather, let me look at this, let me analyze it, let me say to myself, does it really make sense? And that's what we are really calling for on this new show here, Think About It. Really think about it, really look at matters and decide the reality behind them. And we want to start in this episode with the ultimate subject, or the ultimate and most important subject, which is the existence of God or the Almighty Creator, as we say in Islam, Allah. Now, what should be noted, 
and we see there is a very big trend nowadays in atheism and I've had many a conversation with people from different backgrounds and from different religions and what a lot of them say is that they have become atheists because the belief that they were brought up in or that their society their society actually practices in theory or professes to practice is really confusing to them. The belief doesn't make sense. God is three but he's one, but he's three but he's one. The very confusing uh, beliefs that they can't explain and really in reality, which we'll go on to discuss later in, in later episodes, really go against our logic and our rationale and our human you know, nature, our intellect we were given. So they turn to atheism. So what we want to discuss first of all, first and foremost, is what we should really realize is that God's existence and that is logical and it's not illogical. And we find that what a lot of modern atheists don't realize is even the ancient philosophers like Aristotle and Plato, they all believed that there must be a creator. They all believed that if there is creation, there must be a creator. If there is design, there must be a designer. I mean, of course, if we are walking on a beach and we saw some human footprints, we would say that they must be, you know, a result of a human walking on the beach. We could use very strange theories and, and explanations that the waves came down in a certain way and then the wind blew and eventually it formed this human-looking footprint. But logically and rationally, we would say there is a human footprint, therefore a human walked in this, in this particular area. So what we find is in the historic, you know, historically is that atheism generally never really existed until the 20th century. And we, what we also find is that in many of the countries that in the 20th century, that as a state they preached atheism and they made it a forced uh, belief, if that's what you like to call it, or way of thinking or methodology or way of life, that as soon as these countries lost this communist, atheist uh, ruling party and it was no longer the official rule of law, that people rushed back to religion whatever that religion may be, but people rush back to believing in an ultimate creator, in Almighty God. So we see that this is naturally built in into the humans. And we find that the only reason this atheism came in is because of the likes of Darwin, who believed, which we'll discuss uh, a bit later, believed that we came from apes and monkeys. So because they believed that apes and monkeys don't necessarily have that kind of intellect and we all developed from animals animals don't have that kind of intellect they believed that belief in God was something that humans made up at a much later stage and what's very interesting to find is around 1997 there are experiments done in the West and you can find this on you can Google it as they say you can find it on YouTube that uh, researchers, scientists, they did some tests and what they found is that in these tests is that there in the human brain there is an area called the God spot. This is a part of the human brain that basically when they you know they put it in their prods and they were prodding around experimenting that when they did so in this area the person who was being tested had was overcome with very spiritual feelings and would talk about God and would have this very spiritual change in them. So they concluded from this that the human brain is naturally programmed to believe in God. And Islam actually tells us, the Prophet Muhammad peace be upon him, he said that every child or every newborn child is born upon fitra. This fitra is like a natural inclination to believe in the in to believe in the one God, to believe in only God. And then the Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, went on to say, it is only his family who make him a Jew or a Christian or a fire worshipper, etc. 
So this ties in exactly to what the modern research is that we are naturally programmed to believe in in God. And and in the Quran, uh, Allah says to those people, and we find in the Quran as a matter of fact, most of the verses don't address those people who are atheists. Because like we said, this is this was definitely a very small uh, minority amongst mankind. So the Quran always focused on those people who believe in the Almighty, but have directed their worship to someone other than Him. So a lot of the verses in the Quran talk about worshipping only Allah, worshipping God alone. Do not worship the Prophet Muhammad, for example. Do not worship the Prophet Jesus. Do not worship Abraham, Moses, peace be upon them. Do not worship anything except the Almighty Creator. And the Quran emphasizes this over and over again. But there are verses for those people, and then, like I said, they were throughout history the minority, who used to believe, or uh, they didn't really believe in God. So Allah, for example, says in one of the verses, Am min ghayri shay'in am humul khaliqoon. Did they, were they created from nothing, or did they indeed create themselves? So it's posing a very good question to those people who doubt and say there's no God. They may be atheist, completely outright denying it, or they may be agnostic, whereas they don't say, they don't deny it fully, but then again, they don't affirm that there is a creator. So Allah poses this question to them and say, you know, were they created from nothing? Did they just appear like this? Or did they create themselves? So we can look at three logical possibilities. If we look at this verse, we can look at three possible uh, human creation possibilities. One would be that humans were created from nothing by nothing. And this violates our very basic reason. Uh, you cannot get something from nothing. And nothing also cannot create something. Then number two, humans created themselves. This is also an illogical and very contradictory pr proposition. To create oneself, one must already exist. So you cannot create something until it already exists. So then again, who would have created us? And then the final one is that humans were created by something that was already created. And again, if we say that, who created the thing that created us? So the thing that created us must not have been created by anybody and must be totally different to us. And we mentioned earlier about design. Design indicates a designer. And we mentioned, you know, all this all the systems in the world, the sun, the moon, how it alternates, the day and the night, the spring, the summer, the autumn, the winter, all of these things are very intrinsic, are very detailed, are very amazing. And we will discuss this. I want to leave you in this particular episode just to think about this that design indicates a designer. And inshallah, Allah willing, we will start in our next episode in more details on the rationale and logic on the existence of God. And we will discuss more into in our next episode about the design means there must be a designer. And we will also touch upon the Darwinism and why the theory of Darwinism failed. And inshallah, until the next episode, I leave you here on Think About It with the greetings of Islam, the greetings of peace. Wassalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Every morning I wake up and see the splendor of Allah's beauty. The sky at dawn, the silent trees. Praise be to Him, supreme is He. Praise be to Him, supreme is He. As I set to start my day, I think of Allah and I pray. His blessings are with me always. Praise be to Him, most kind is He. Praise be to Him, most kind is He. Every morning I wake up and see the splendor of Allah's beauty. The sky at dawn, the silent trees, praise be to Him, supreme is He.